Voters went to the polls during the presidential primary to determine the fate of two millet proposals affecting Lake Warden Community Schools. The Chamber of Commerce celebrated International Women's Day with a buffet luncheon and networking opportunity for women business leaders. Battle of the Books returned for its 39th year, possibly instilling a lifelong love of reading for local fifth graders. And the Orient Art Center hosted an opening reception for an exhibit known as the Art of Storytelling. We'll tell you who came out on top. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Twenty twenty four will be a busy year for the Oakland County and Orion Township clerks. Three elections are planned for the year, including an August primary and the presidential election in November. The first of three took place at the end of February. On Tuesday, February twenty seventh, voters were encouraged to go to the polls to vote in the presidential primary election. According to the Oakland County Clerk's Office, only twenty five point seventy nine percent of registered voters cast a ballot in the primary. In the race for president, Democrats selected Joe Biden with 81.83% of the vote. 12.84% of Democrats declared they were uncommitted. On the Republican side of things, former President Donald Trump received 61.70% of the vote, with challenger Nikki Haley coming in second with 33.37%. Also on the ballot for voters living within the Lake Orion School District were two replacement millage proposals. The replacement operating millage proposal passed with 62.99% of the vote, 7,328 yes votes to 4,306 no votes. The replacement building and site sinking fund millage proposal passed with 60.33% of the vote, 7,020 yes votes to 4,516 no votes. Well, definitely thank you. Thank you uh, for our students. Thank you for our staff. Thank you for our school community. Uh, obviously, we have a, a lot of support and, and we've been doing some great things and this will allow us to continue to do those great things for our students and community. The non-homestead operating millage has been supported by voters since 1994 and goes toward the general operating budget, including student programs, staffing and services. The sinking fund millage is used for the construction and repair of schools, school security, transportation, technology, and the purchase of school property. These millages should adequately fund the district for the next 10 years and keep tax levies at the current rates for primary homesteads. Well, with state funding, it gives us some consistency to know that we'll be getting about $10 million a year um, you know, through the, the uh, non-homestead, $5 million through the, um, you know, the sinking fund. And so that will allow us to continue to keep our facilities up to date, uh, what people would expect. It will allow us to keep our programs, uh, allow us to be competitive with our staff and have the great teachers in front of our children. For more information, visit LakeOrionSchools.org or call 248-693-5400. International Women's Day is celebrated each year on March 8th and focuses on issues such as gender equality, reproductive rights, and violence against women. The earliest known reported Women's Day event was held in New York City in 1909. International Women's Day took shape in 1911 across Europe. The holiday became a mainstream global holiday when it was supported by the United Nations in 1977. On Friday, March 8th, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its second Orion Women's Leaders Networking Luncheon in the Dragon Room of Orion Township Hall. Scheduled to coincide with International Women's Day, 49 women and one man enjoyed an internationally inspired buffet provided by member restaurants. Today we're so excited to welcome all these lovely ladies to celebrate International Women's Day. So today all we have eight different restaurants that contributed to our internationally inspired strolling buffet. So all of these ladies are enjoying German food, sushi, Italian, Chinese, and Texas Roadhouse to represent the U.S. So we're here just celebrating women for over 100 years. International Women's Day has been celebrated throughout the world. And we're here to gather just to inspire 
and to support each other. We're also excited to launch our 2024 philanthropic initiatives. So we'll be announcing that. Um, we're going to be out in the community working on four different sectors, the environment, arts and culture, mental health, and youth. So we're going to be launching those initiatives today as well. So we have a packed house. Every seat is full. Obviously, people want to gather together, or women want to gather together. We do have one man, <laughs> lucky guy, yeah. gets to have lunch with 49 women today. So we're very thankful for all of our restaurants that participated. In addition to great food, the event acted as a networking opportunity for the Orient Women Leaders Group, or OWLS, in the greater Orient area. According to their Facebook page, the group is meant to educate, support, mentor, and connect women in the business community. I think every woman wants to gather with their peers, their work colleagues, um, their friends, and meet new acquaintances on this International Day of Celebration. Who wants to have lunch at their desk when they can have an internationally inspired luncheon with 50 other ladies that are similar minded, right? They're all business women. They can help mentor each other. They can help each other with work problems, child problems, and the whole work-life balance. So I think it's really important to bring people together on this day in particular. This is our second year we brought people together or women together to celebrate, um, just celebrate each other and support each other. The Orient Area Chamber hosts networking opportunities for its members all year long. For a list of upcoming mixers, workshops, and ribbon cuttings, visit orientareachamber.com or you can call 248-693-6300. What started out as a small event inside the Orient Township Public Library almost 40 years ago has grown into a massive competition that nurtures a student's love of reading. ONTV's Joe Johnson covered this year's event and he seemed to enjoy it as much as the students. On the morning of Saturday, March 9th, 100 fifth graders from within the Lake Orion School District formed 22 teams to compete in the 39th annual Battle of the Books. Orion Township librarians announced a list of 11 books way back in November that students had to read prior to the event. Our goal is to variety. So we want to give them books in different genres. We, wanna, we want them to read books that they would never pick up off the shelf themselves. Um, and then they realize, oh wait, I do like these kind of books. So that's like the main goal is just to include such a variety that they've never decided to do on their own. On Saturday, the students arrived at Walden Middle School, most dressed in colorful costumes, to tackle 50 questions posed by the librarians. Each team had to respond with a title and the name of the author for a possible 100 points. You have kids who love sports, so this is kind of the, you know, kids who love reading, they can celebrate this way, parents can celebrate them. Um, they're all in costumes, they all have teams of three to five kids, and um, they just, you know, they, this is a way for them to really enjoy reading and not like read just for school, like reading for fun and having a good time doing it. Uh, we want them to walk away with a love of reading, honestly. Uh, that's, I think reading for fun is what we want to instill here, and I, I think that happens. Um, you know, just talking to a parent that was talking about how much fun their kid had reading all the books and, you know, memorizing as much as they could, how eager they were to participate. So, uh, you know, building readers that like to read for fun, future readers. Um, I saw a lot of our National Honor Society volunteers this year were former uh, fifth grade battle of the book participant so I think that just shows that you know uh, you instill that love of reading and learning and it continues through the upper grades. On Monday March 11th the teams were invited to Lake Orion High School for an award ceremony in the Performing Arts Center. Before announcing the top teams author Skylar Shrimp was introduced to the audience. A Chicago native Skylar is the author of Three Strikes Summer one of the books the participants were required to read. She said she wasn't aware of Battle of the Books prior to getting the invitation to speak at the event. I asked her to describe the experience. Um, it's very humbling and amazing because you know, like, like kids are different than adults, right? They're squirrely and they're moving around and they're excited and they're talking. You're like, oh my gosh, it got really uh, nervous to, to talk to all of them. Um, yeah, it got really nervous, <laughs> honestly, but really, well, it's the years of being on the stage, but um, <laughs> 
it was really special. It's really magical. There was a moment where I was sitting in the front and I could hear people like whispering my name as they figured out where I was sitting. <laughs> and I was like, this is so cool. And um, it's just really cool to see kids get excited about your book and, you know, the things they remember from your book. Everyone wants to talk about Davy, <laughs> you know, different parts of the book. And um, it's really, it's really kind of magical to get to interact with the kids reading your book. What was the, the message of your presentation today? Um, gosh, the message is that um, being a reader, loving books, writing books, it, it matters whether or not you become an author or not. Um, books are something that they're powerful forces in our lives. They teach us how to feel things and know things. And um, yeah, that it's a great gift to read and that we should all be grateful for the people in our lives that gave us this gift and give it to the next people as well, whether or not you're in fifth grade or you're 85 or whatever. Following her presentation, the librarians handed out awards in several categories. The award for best team name went to the Bean Burritos. The award for best costumes went to the Robo Readers. The team with the most team spirit was announced as the Reading Rockstars. Coming in third place with 88 points were the Page Protectors. Finishing in second place with 90 points were Men in Books. And the winner of the 2024 Battle of the Books competition with a score of 94 points was Team Dragon Samurai. We were just really happy. I was shaking. How do you prepare for this contest? So basically our goal was just to read like every book and then we could have different views on all of the books and we could answer the questions. So most of us did all of the books, um, like Ajit, he wrote, he wrote like, all of the books. And um, so now we had like different views on the books. So if someone said it was, the answer was this book and we knew it wasn't, then someone else could like prove that it wasn't. Yeah. Oh, I just read, 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 read. Like I just read all the books so I would have like all the n knowledge from them so that I could like uh, help my teammates win the competition. What went through your head when they called out your name, the very last team? Oh my gosh! <laughs> did they just call our name? No way! We did it! Let's go! I am so happy right now. I was like, oh my gosh, and then I was like very like, Oh no. And then I was also like, yay, we got first place. And it was all like mixed up like that. <laughs> so what would you say to fourth graders who are thinking about maybe doing this next year? Would you say do it or what? I'd say do it, but like if, it's, if like somebody else doesn't want to do it, don't give up, just keep doing it. Congratulations to the winning team and all those who participated at Lake Orion High School. This is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. That certainly looked like a lot of fun. The Orion Arts Center is no stranger to partnering with community groups in the Lake Orion area. Recently, the Arts Center joined forces with the library for a fun competition. On Thursday, March 7th, a number of artists gathered at the Arts Center for the opening reception of an exhibit known as the Art of Storytelling. Participants were given a copy of the book, Kitchens of the Great Midwest, by J. Ryan Straddle, and encouraged to create a work of art inspired by the book. The artists were required to use the library's makerspace when creating their submission. People who sign up for the contest get a copy of the book, which was Kitchens of the Great Midwest. They're to read the book. They are to create a piece of art based on some concept in the book. Uh, and using the makerspace at the library as part of a component that goes into the artwork. Um, it's fun to do these partnerships and pairing literature and art and even this one is a little bit of cooking. It's just a fun fusion of something interesting to do and a different way for the artist to connect with another partner in the community. Now in its second year, seven works of art were submitted. Awards were handed out for first, second and third place. Nabbing the first place prize was Cindy Howard of Waterford. Oh, I've been uh, an artist that's um, done many uh, competitions in Lake Orion, and I did the maker. I did the um, competition last year, 
for the storytelling, so I just keep in touch with whatever's going on here. I worked hard at it, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Um, there was a lot of other people that did a very nice job too, so I'm grateful that I got, you know, the first place. The submissions will continue to be on display for the next several weeks until the Art Center hosts an opening reception for the annual middle school all media exhibition on April 4th at 6.30 p.m. That exhibit will be followed by the Orient Art Center Scholarship Show on April 25th. High school seniors planning on studying art beyond high school can submit work to be considered for one of three scholarships, including the Joan Brace Scholarship. For more information or to apply, visit orientartcenter.org. The deadline for submissions is April 17th. Of course, February was Black History Month and the Orion Township Public Library partnered up with Lake Orion Schools to come up with a creative way to celebrate. On Tuesday, February 13th, dozens of students and family members gathered at the Orion Township Public Library for the unveiling of an exhibit of artwork inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Starting on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, students from throughout the school district were challenged to come up with artwork, essays, and even a video conveying his message of love. So today, each of the schools um, in the district um, held a Martin Luther King contest. Our theme this year was Stick With Love. And then each school had winners for the artwork. Um, and we were able to partner with the library this year so that all of the kids could have their artwork on display for the whole month of February here at the library. So it's a wonderful partnership where the students all were able to share their creativity um, and their artwork and also um, share Martin Luther King's message of loving others. Um, well, I've just really always been inspired by Dr. King's. I wanted like the whole theme, stick with love, and so that's why I wrote these sticks have love because it's like a tree. And um, I just wanted to like make sure everybody in my class was included too. I think his message was that, like, always stick with love, like, don't show hate. Tell me about your work. What, what message did you want in your artwork? I wanted people to know that, like, the same thing Martin Luther King told us, like, stick with love and the quote about stick with love, hate is too burden to bear. Tell me about the artwork behind you. Uh, Martin Luther King has a crown, and, and right there is a heart, and it says, I love Martin Luther King, and it says, I have a dream, and there are both two hearts at the start and at the end, and there's someone help, helping someone, and there's an American flag, and there's a book because I love to read. I've been doing a lot of artwork and wanted to like to participate in a lot of art contests and stuff. What do you think his message to the world was? Um, like we should like work together and not judge people by the look. And tell me about what you learned about Martin Luther King. Um, he like was a person who was like trying to do his best, like st make people like be together, like the black and the white. Mm -hmm. And lots of people like didn't listen to him and like thought he was just being really silly, mm -hmm. but he was actually trying to do something really important. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of his message? I think everybody should stick with love. I thought it was a really cool purpose for doing it, and I thought it would really like it could get the word out because not a lot of people would just choose to do this on their own. So I thought this would motivate people, and I thought there was a. I thought there was a good meaning behind it. Tell me about your piece of artwork. What inspired it? What, what's your message in the artwork? So it was really trying to bring us together, showing how it happened more than it now. Because it, was, it didn't just take a weekend to do it. It took years, and it took a lot of people and a lot of work. Because people still don't. And it takes a lot of effort to do that and to have the courage to do that. So that's what inspired me to do it. 
So you see, I want to have like a message of basically um how black and white want to be together, but um but the rules tore them apart, and how Martin Luther King wanted to bring them together. What's your message in your artwork? Like this says, colors can change the world. And these are people supporting each other. What do you think you learned? I think he learned that even though you're different skin colors, you could still be together. Do little persons. He do one person, and then he cuts, and then turn on a lot of people together. And then, actually, and and spot a hair just have drawn two people in the same place, like this. Yeah. And I have drawn that earth, and a heart draw the word like this. Love, because everyone has love inside the planet. This is why you put on the, like, the heart on the top of the planet. Are you proud to see it here at the library? Yeah! <laughs> what message did you want to include in your artwork? Well, I know that Israel and Palestine were fighting when I made this, so um, I knew that I should draw a stick with love on it, and they, and this is just a picture of them loving each other because I don't feel like there should be war. Did you know about Martin Luther King before you got involved with this? Yes. What do you think his message was to the world? That we should be friends with each other even with, even with our differences. I wanted to show that everyone was equal and being mean isn't really nice. It's not it's not cool as people would see in this generation. What are some of the elements that make up your artwork? I printed articles from the timeline of Martin Luther King and I wanted to show that um, the work that was put behind the freedom that uh, we have now. So it says here that if I scan the QR code I see a video. Tell me about your video. Um, uh, this video is a song that I sang. It's called One Little Candle. This song explains about like how like love is like a candle and you should let it shine. Why did you want to get involved in this, uh, this uh, art exhibit? Is it important to you? Well, I compete. I I've been I've been in the contest last year. And by the way, this song is about love, and this theme is about I still want to stick with love. And I thought, oh, maybe we I should sing this song, and Mar maybe Martin Luther King should like would like the song. You wrote an essay. Tell me about what made you want to go that route. It's just easier for me to write. Sometimes I can have more of an understanding of things when writing and it's an easier way to express my thoughts for me. Yeah. So tell me, what was the message of your essay? Uh, it was just about some of the benefits of holding love and the disadvantages of hatred, like how you could gain that love, how you could stop yourself from getting bared down by hatred. Well, my artwork is about um, how Martin Luther King was very important and kind and nice. What's the quote you have in the middle of heart there? Um, how you can do like anything you can and you have to keep on trying. That's awesome. How does it feel to see your work on display with all this other great artwork? I'm very happy and I feel very excited that it is because um, I'm really passionate about my, about my art. So. Tell me about your artwork. It's, it's about love and it's about um, Martin Luther King Jr. What's his message, do you think, to people? Stick with love. Okay. Tell me about your artwork. Um, mine is creative, and uh, I put a lot of effort into it. And um, that um, it's about Martin Luther King and um, his, spe his special um, speech. What message did you want in your artwork? Um, Stick with, stick with love. Mm -hmm. What do you think Martin Luther King's message to the world was? Um, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. If you wake up and you see your parents, you should give them a compliment so they feel like you care for them.
if you're next to someone and you're about to say something mean, just stop and think and say something nice, like a compliment. Um, so my artwork, it basically ties all back into his heart because it's stick with love. The red on the side and in his tie basically represents you should stick with love. And the background has words that I think are most important from his I Have a Dream speech. I learned that his whole life he knew that he wasn't going to make it very far, but his only goal was to make a big impact. It wasn't just to live a long life, but he wanted to do as much as he can could before that was over. Again, the exhibit was on display at the library throughout the end of February to celebrate Black History Month. And for more information, you can visit orionlibrary.org and check out their new and improved website. Warm weather is right around the corner, which means the garage sale season will soon be getting underway. Orion Township recently got a head start with an indoor event. On Friday, March 8th, Orion Township hosted its first garage sale of the season with an event inside the Orion Center. Beginning at 9 a.m. and running until 3 p.m., 30 vendors set up in the banquet room offering everything from clothing to knickknacks, collectibles, and more. Parking and admission was free for visitors. If you missed that event, Orion Township will be hosting its enormous outdoor community garage sale on Saturday, June 1st in the parking lot of the Orion Center. If you're interested in getting rid of your clutter, be sure to sign up as a vendor by calling 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.